Well, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone to Made of Things. On this episode, we have uh, an amazing comedian, uh, one of my favorite stand-ups and stand-up comedian, um, and I'd say the daredevil of wordplay, or the Tasmanian devil <laughs> of stand-up, uh, Mike Kaplan. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And those are uh, those are both wonderful uh, assignations. <laughs> I, I accept. I appreciate. Uh, happy to be here. Obviously, the Tasmanian devil is because it's not necessarily the animal uh, or nor the cartoon, but I would say a mix of both. Uh, yeah. But like um, maybe because it's uh, because it's uh, very like, quick and relentless. Yeah. And yeah, it's windy and then yes. it comes back around and around. So, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, perhaps perhaps I am more of a Tasmanian angel. Ah, Ooh. yes, because mm. uh, <laughs> still still really fast, but then uh, I don't uh, you know I don't slobber as much. I guess I don't know. I, I slobber a lot, so yeah, maybe I'm maybe yes. I feel like I have a Tasmanian devil on one shoulder and a Tasmanian angel on mm. the other. So, and we've heard of fallen angels. What about ascending devils? Oh yeah, a rising, a rising demon, yes. perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little demon as a child, and now I've learned and lived the world. <laughs> and uh, through um, the, the 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 life experience, I've become um, much more pious. But like a biblical angel, the one with like a thousand eyes and like a monster. Mm. Yeah, those ones. Yeah, those are those are cool. Sure, that 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 is that is what my comedy is like. <laughs> I, I have a thousand eyes. Uh, looking at the audience, they cannot escape. Yes, exactly, and uh, like a gargoyle of fun. I used to have. That's a another one. I just came up in my room. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I had. I had a. I hallucinate because um, I have narcolepsy, and so for months and months, I thought there was a gargoyle in my um, uh, in my ceiling, just like looking at me sleep, and it liked to watch me sleep, which was creepy. As one does, but, like yeah, yeah, gargoyles. Yeah. So I hallucinate nice things, like a nice gargoyle. Wow. Creepy one. Does it scare you or you're just like, ah, just another thing Sometimes they thing scare me, that's yeah. There. Sometimes they, the mm. hallucinations scare me. Uh, sometimes they're not just nice. Sometimes they hold my hands. Mm. Like, yeah. Wow. That is mm -hmm. nice. Plus, I guess if you're really goth, then you have like dec decor that decoration that has includes uh, gargoyles. I guess I would well, assume. Well, my my bedroom is like goth punk central with like bats and skeletons everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it goes with the decor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no gargoyles, I think. Uh, no gargoyles. Well, some skeletons. Some skeletons. Some like bats. A, a lot of bats. A lot of bats. Yeah. Which one, is one more bat. Which is good for <laughs> one more bat. Which is good for um for the audience. For for and plus for the time of season. Yeah, it's spooky season. It's Spooktober. Are you doing something for it anything for that. Spooktober? Because it's officially uh, called that know, now, I guess. <laughs> uh, I have not dressed up for uh, Spooktober for <laughs> some number of years. Uh, I I recently just learned, you know, for I've been on Twitter for you know more than a decade, and every October or so, I would see all my comedian friends change their Twitter handle to like a a spooky, you know, a spooky version of their name, and I I just learned how to do that this year, you know, more than a decade into uh, being on Twitter. So uh, my Twitter account is dressing up as uh, you know, instead of just Mike Kaplan, I think might now right now it might be a Mike. Uh, it's October, Kaplan, something like that. <laughs> I have an easy one for mine. Oh, really? Um, my name is Nono, short for Leonor. So it's like Lenore. So uh, a few years ago, I went by Helenor. Mm. So, that's a, so that's a good one. Exactly. Yeah. Classic uh, punk rock and roll. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nickname. Word, yeah, yeah. Word, uh, Helenor. Helenor. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, Mike, uh, how uh, are uh, you doing? Oh, thank you. This fine thank season. Thank you. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, I'll wait and see if that's the whole question. Yes. Because I, I no. thought it was, how are you? But then you really, you snuck the doing yeah. in right at the end. Usually, um, how are you is a double I, question I, though, on this show. It has been oh, yes. in the Zoom calls. I assume that it's because of the slight, which isn't actually that much uh, um, noticeable, I would say, lag. I'm more lagging myself in my brain than the, than the connection on Zoom. 
Oh yeah, we're catching up to the to the robots these days. I uh, so when it, it's interesting, the question of how are you or how are you mm -hmm. doing or how have you been? I feel like they all have slightly different connotations these days because how are you seems to center on like now yeah. what is happening right now how are you doing at least implies a range you know sort of a a verb of like it's been happening there are you know vibrations and resonances and you know molecules spinning it's not just a a snapshot you know it's more uh more music than a painting and how have you been uh could be i sort of you know a, a combination of the wave particle duality of you know uh, of personality i guess it's like so how are you how have you been at a particular point or like an aggregation of those points uh so i guess how i am now is a little busy uh answering this question <laughs> and uh grateful uh that's whenever people ask me how I, how are you especially you know since the pandemic began uh it's al always includes a measure of gratitude for being in community communication with somebody who at least cares enough to ask the I mean and I believe you mean it sincerely some people I think it's most people these days are asking how are you more sincerely because in you know sort of the before times or however you refer to it uh, sometimes a how are you is just a, a pleasantry just to like well an opening bid into like well let's get into the real conversation but now so much of the real conversation is truly how how are you? How have you been? Are you okay? And I am, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I, I have a home. I share with my girlfriend. She is out of town this week. I miss her. I'm uh, grateful to have uh, the time and space. And I'm also grateful that she's returning in a few days. Uh, we went on tour together. She, we drove for uh, probably, uh, I don't, thousands of miles and you know dozens of hours uh over the course of a week and we did that a couple months earlier even longer and so i'm grateful to get to do comedy uh again uh, the way i was doing it before you know live in in front of people sometimes uh, in buildings where people are all vaccinated and which is wonderful sometimes outdoors sometimes uh in more of a wild westy situation where i'm like i hope that everybody's bandana is keeping them safe and secure uh but yeah i am i guess uh, to make a uh, a short story long. I am well. <laughs> Thank you. Short story long is my middle name as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess uh, how are you have been doing? <laughs> mm. A brand new question. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I so I start every day that I can uh, with a couple of rituals that help me be the way that I want to be or feel the way that I want to feel. Uh, they are like I usually drink uh, one. This is a, a little more than a liter of water, mm -hmm. and I drink three of these containers at least in a day is my goal. And oh. the first one I drink uh, almost first thing. I, I I will either meditate while I'm still in bed and then get up, sort of brush my teeth, and then drink this water. Or sometimes I will uh, meditate after drinking the water. But uh, the first three main things are drink water meditate and then do morning pages which i usually use uh 750 words.com for uh i just like their uh their platform they like after you you write 750 words each day or whenever you do it they give you sort of an analysis of uh the themes that you were writing about and like the words uh they give you an alphabetical listing of the words that you used most uh like uh by size so if you use the word love the most it'll be the biggest oh, I've and heard if of you this. use no, I've, 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 yeah i've heard of it hmm. i used to do the um literature analysis and i would do that mm. for the for for like entire books but like in my head just like i would notice like repeating repeating words and repeating sounds and my teachers would always be like wow that is like technical <laughs> <laughs> no for sure i used to do that as well college but uh um not as, uh, because i wasn't in literature but i wasn't yeah. communication uh as a lot of 
random people are <laughs> that happen to end up in, com in communication or media studies or something like that uh, and here we are uh, but uh, which is great so uh, but the um, I, d I didn't know about the website but uh, what are uh, first first thing uh, you, you do before um, uh, after you wake up mm -hmm. I do as well and I think I believe it's really really healthy yeah. uh, because it kind of cleanses oh, your, yeah. your uh, water uh, and a glass of water before bed as well uh, prevents mm. heart disease or something good because yeah. I drink like a liter and a half of water before bed so I'll never have like <laughs> I'll, yeah. ha I'll have like three like oh. healthy hearts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. <laughs> then I have to wake up in the middle of the night to pee. So, uh, oh, no. and then I have to wake up. So, so no heart disease, but poor sleep brings heart disease. Eh, it's unavoidable. <laughs> Nothing you can oh, do. Oh yes, I mean it. Yeah, I you definitely can't do everything. Like you know, you can't have it all. Like you can't have all the experiences of like, let's say, you know, oh, uh, maybe I want to have children, but also I want to see what it's like to not have children. You can't do both of those exactly. for your entire life. You, uh, you can't see what it's like to sleep through the night and also drink a lot of water right before you exactly. go to bed, unless you don't care about what happens to your bed uh, and your body. But uh, I, about a year, sometime a year ago, a little over a year ago, during the initial months of the lockdown, I believe, uh, my I, I was uh, cranky one night and I didn't know why. And sort of the normal things that it could be is like not enough sleep, not enough food. Like this is a joke that I tell that my, which is the truth that my girlfriend will sometimes, if I seem away, she'll be like, when is the last time that you've eaten? And I will be like, not exact, this is a caricature of it, but I'll, I'll be something like, uh, it's not that. I'll, oh, I will eat something to demonstrate to you that it wasn't that, mm, it was that, that was actually it. So, but on this particular occasion, uh, a year ago or a little more uh, I had eaten enough recently and here's the thing obviously to be cranky to be uh, annoyed frustrated irked whatever like it's not there's many reasons to be those things but at this particular time it seemed to me that I'd been feeling fine earlier and nothing specifically had changed uh, but then uh, my girlfriend Rini, she offered to me, uh, she was like, have you, how much water have you drunk today? And I was like, oh, I haven't drunk that much water today. And she's like, why don't you try that? And I'm like, like, that's going to be the magical <laughs> thing. Glug, glug, glug. Oh, I do feel Voila. better. Like, because water is, I mean, we are made of water. So if we do not have enough water, then we are not as much ourselves. We are not as able to function like all of our body parts like we, our body is mostly water we are we require it and it's uh it's she my, my girlfriend has read a lot of books about it or at least at least one and like a lot like she's like an i, I don't want to say she's a water expert like i think we're all you know as much as possible like we're we're all water and we could all know as much as possible about it we're but, made of so much of like, it yet some some a lot some of us I, I would believe are not water experts, <laughs> but... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. fair. That's hmm. very fair. Um, you know how... Uh, I don't maybe know if this we, is all, a, we all are a because we're made of yeah. it. Have you ever felt oh, like yes. I mean, the water? Just like yeah, absolutely. inside the water and just felt like, oh, I am this. Oh, like, each time I go like swimming in the sea. It extends like your... Absolutely. Oh, your, yeah. Have you ever been in a... Uh, a sen sensory deprivation tank, like a float tank. Like when I, I, I've been in those a couple times and it, you know, the water is, you're floating on it and it's like the same temperature as your body. So it's the most uh, like sort of connected to uh, you, you know the your you sort of the boundaries of where you stop yeah, exactly. and like the the other water begins and the rest of you know it's just sort of darkness and then uh, yeah. But so you know how. Like when you, if your computer isn't working, sometimes you call uh, and they're like, well, the first thing we have to just double check is, is it plugged in? Is it turned on? And like, obviously that everybody knows that, but maybe that helps sometimes. Maybe some people don't know that, but it seems like my girlfriend offered this, that uh, if you ever go to the doctor for particular things, like not a broken leg, not, you know, uh, not everything, but that, you know, uh, exhaustion or, you know, fatigue, like there's so many things that you, that water will be, uh, if not the solution, uh, a great help. So I feel like that's the question, like, 
is it turned on and plugged in is to computer helpers as have how much water have you been drinking ought be to medical professionals at least you know as the frontline first question <laughs> we're we're about the same age i mean we're the same age i'm from 81 and this is a relatively new problem i have as well or not a problem but i i would say something that has happened to me more in the past year or so like suddenly Oh, I haven't drank. drank uh, I haven't drunk. Uh, I haven't dr uh, had any uh, water in the past. Uh, I don't know hours, and then I drink water and I feel fine and no headache. Yeah, I drink so much water. Exactly my doctor the same, told me to exactly drink what you're less saying. water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's where we want to be. We want. I mean, because obviously you can't drink all your water for your entire life or the week or the day at once. Like there's even. I learned this about, you know, poison is determined by, uh, like, it's the, the quantity yeah. that makes something poisonous, that you can be poisoned by water. It takes a lot of water, mm -hmm. but eventually, like, too much water could kill mm -hmm. you cinnamon, uh, cinnamon the same is way that... Uh, yes, fairly just easily. Don't be careful, yeah. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, don't go around oh, eating yeah. several spoons of, uh, spoons of it, like, mouth, yeah. mouthfuls. I think it's, like, five sp five. Uh, is this nutmeg though? Nut nutmeg, yeah. nutmeg, for, nutmeg sure. for sure. No cinnamon as well. Cinnamon as yeah, well. Yeah, there's a cinnamon test or something I mean, like yeah. those. If you eat there enough was chili, like, not, also, <laughs> this cool. is like when when you mentioned something that was trending online like ten years ago. It's it's it really sucks. It already sucks like at, Wait, at the you time. The cinnamon challenge. Yeah. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it sucked then, and it sucks even more now that I'm referencing it. You know, <laughs> like uh. I, I think it's fine that you're Don't referencing it. it. I, it's <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, now, now we can have nostalgia for it. Like, here's a the, this reminds me. There was a song that I heard at first when I was a teenager, I believe, and I didn't like it. And then, like twenty years later, I heard it again, and I didn't recognize it as the song that I didn't like. But I did recognize it as a song that I knew, and I was like, I like this. I remember this song. I like this song. And then it got to the chorus, the part that I did recognize, and I was like, Hey, wait a second. I this is now. I'm like, I'm enjoying listening to the song that I remember, not enjoying like the sound of the flavor of. So like, I had clearly grown, or you know, I don't know if it's my taste that changed. Like the song didn't change, and ironically, or maybe appropriately, uh, the song, the specific song was. Uh, uh, the one that goes love me love me by the cardigans oh, yeah. which when i first heard it was ironic because i was like i do not love you love you song but eventually like over the course of time i was like i d i do love you love you now <laughs> and so in a similar way like i i didn't mind uh, i didn't care when the cinnamon challenge was happening but now that you're bringing it up again it's nice to it's nice to be alive for a time <laughs> and have things to remember from the past to be like oh, Ah, yes, I remember that thing that I didn't like that. I mean, look, we can be grateful mm -hmm. that it, even if you don't like thinking about it, be like, wow, for 10 years, I wasn't <laughs> thinking about this. And like, now I'm thinking about it for a brief while. And now, like, ah, good old, like good old nostal nostalgia, even like nostalgia feels good, even when it's for a thing that you didn't enjoy, potentially. I may, I don't want to tell you how to feel, but that's how I feel. Yeah, for, instance, like, for instance, like in the 80s, there was these songs by Taco. This is a possibly a European reference, but uh, Taco mm -hmm. used to, he's like a, a German, uh, Indonesian sort of uh, uh, person, <laughs> which is an, an unusual cross uh, of nationalities. Uh, but then he traveled all around the world and um, back in the 80s, he uh, used to do covers of old timey horrible songs <laughs> like uh putting on the ritz which is really annoying um anyway uh, this is just uh, for everyone to go check out taco and his videos oh yeah they're He's like extremely marvelous. annoying but uh no, they're like yeah. marvelous yeah because like... if you like whimsy i guess yeah yeah, yeah. and that's it how do you spell taco it like the food yeah, just taco, taco or 
Yeah, yeah. Great. And uh, it's really terrible. But um, and we'll put like a little photo of him. At the <laughs> yeah, which for sure, sure we will. Great. Actually, he he's very active on Facebook. I found, yeah. uh, I found out, and um, he replies and is very pleasant, as one would nice. be. Which reminds me a lot of your set on AKA because one Nickelback, two uh, hating things, uh, three not hating things. For having favorites, five not being not caring too much about hating things, or did I mention this already? I don't know. I'm making up a list. I'm getting Mike Stone now, <laughs> and uh, it's not <laughs> supposed to be because it's not mine. And uh, but uh, okay, so Nickelback, we've all agreed that they are a thing to be reckoned with, <laughs> um, even if you haven't heard them. Uh, but what about and this? ties in with the taco thing or the song that you've heard that you didn't like then now you like and now you tolerate at least which is um or appreciate that exists uh which is what about those earworms that you can't get rid of and you're not oh, even yeah. trying to talk uh, uh as much as you want to uh, love them it's very hard Great question. Uh, first also of all, thank you long. for. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so I'll try to address everything that you said. I thank you for listening to my oh, album, please. AKA, and thank if you for if it. whoever is watching, oh thank you for your for your listeners and viewers right now. If you haven't uh, listened to that album, uh, it. Uh, it'll be a great reference point, at least. I mean, like not not just not just for enjoyment of the album's sake, but so you can continue to get the most out of this conversation. Exactly. We haven't spoiled Feel free anything. to you know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> take, but yeah, so I I do talk uh, about uh, the only spoiler is I do talk about Nickelback uh, for an extended period of time, but not from the the perspective that most people take on Nickelback, which is that they are uh, bad and to be shunned. And for reasons that people, I, I think most people who dislike them, it's sort of like cafeteria food or, you know, just things that we've agreed, like there's some wonderful cafeteria food out there and there's potentially like there's, you know, Nickelback is very popular. Anyway, the point is uh, to answer your question about earworms, like I... Uh, I grew up, my parents were music teachers, oh. and I started playing the violin when I was four and taught myself guitar when I was in high school. I took many like music classes uh, for my entire childhood. Uh, like mo it was more of a like a religious education than my religious education. Mm. Like my parents, like I feel like music was like the religion of the house. Oh. It was like one of the first languages I learned, and so I mean I think it's such a a powerful. I mean music. Like I mean I don't know. It, like there's some people who are more visual, more tactile, more kinesthetic. Like I am uh, an audio engager. We're both like, musici like music musicians and, and come from musical family, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's uh, like, I remember I was thinking about this recently. Like I learned in maybe second or third grade, age seven or eight, uh, the the 50 states of the United States in order by learning it via song. You know, that a song, like be, if you learn how it goes, like Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, like that I still know that song. And I'm like very, it's so, it's such a powerful like learning tool. Like we can, like a, Hawaii because songs the like- Hawaii 52nd state. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's not a part of the song, but yeah, if that were if that were so, um, I like it. I like your addition. But like you know, commercials use like the same kind of music earworm technology to be like, oh, that's why we remember like Nabisco. Like, I'm sorry to you know bring in uh, capitalism here, but that's like I remember like songs from commercials from my childhood. Like, I try to not watch that many commercials now when possible, yeah. but. Like music has such a, a power, like a stickiness to it, like a, a, a literal resonance that helps us like remember it. I wonder why we stopped learning things via song. Maybe not everyone did. Maybe like it's a, such a wonderful yes. way. Like people talk about memory palaces as a way like to remember more things. And that's like using sort of the the visual and like sort of geo uh, like uh, the geographic capacities that we've been like evolutionarily 
actually like trained to uh, you know manifest and exhibit and engage with over the years like we it's important to our survival to remember where things are and so we can like hack that system with memory palaces to memorize more things but for me I, I've, I've never really done that but I feel like remember one time I was in the shower and I was like I thought of sometimes I think of funny things and I have a digital recorder and I record them and I'm like I'll try that on stage and if I'm in the shower when I think of funny thing I'm like okay I either have to try like trust that I'll remember it try real hard to remember it be okay with forgetting it but I remember one time I was in the shower and I was like oh why don't I like sing a little song about the idea and then I had like maybe two or three ideas and I was like okay this is the song about keys song about keys and where I put them you know and I'm like okay great and now and part of the the thing that I wanted to remember was the very idea of using song to remember things and be like my keys are obviously in my shoe by the door wait no now there's a jar that my girlfriend got you know and whatever it is uh like it's so much i mean i love i love doing comedy and i feel like there is like a musicality to most comedians work like there's a a rhythm and a cadence to so many people's you know the the intonation like the the choices that people make with you know when they're speaking when they're pausing i uh, many comedians do pause i, I i'm very unlike many comedians who do not pause i i don't pause but i was i've been to. told you know they say that yeah oh no i i do my best in conversation but uh oh yes the uh the tasmanian <laughs> Whirlwind Angel is at it again. And uh, yeah, so the I guess the point is like music is such a, a powerful thing that, you know, can like water, there can be potentially either too much of it or the quality and quantity can uh, be overwhelming in a way that if you don't, if you have a song stuck in your head that you don't want there and you're like, I would love for this worm to travel out of my ear. I mean, I guess my only my recommendation to myself and anyone who wishes is like if you have a song in your head that you wish weren't there what song if you had to have a song what song do you wish was there and start start singing that song in your head and trying to or make a new song like over overpower it be like earworm be gone you know like yeah, whatever whatever you want to do whatever works for you i don't know if i've answered your question but i have talked what, a lot what, wait 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 <laughs> yes. can you uh, remove the earworm of sharon do you believe in life after love it's so powerful but do i mean, you want to okay. No, actually, no. Like, I'm, fine. I'm fine with it just like being around. Yeah, I, actually, I, I've been I've written a cover song for that song that if you if you want, if you want to have like just a slightly different song in your head, it's uh, I believe in life during love. That's all. <laughs> uh, That's endearing. Oh, and, and love during life. Yes. And I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure. I haven't listened to all the lyrics of that song, but I I feel like there is no at, like I guess I understand what it, what after love means, but also I feel like love is an ever present you know constant force in in the universe in life that uh, that there is no real such thing as after it or before it. There is only it and during it because uh, in my in my experience in my understanding, and I'm certainly not an expert, but it always is. Uh, you're not an expert, but you're made of it, much like water. <laughs> oh, us. yeah. I think I'm made of water, water and love. I did a 23 in me. I'm uh, like mostly water, some love, and Jewish. <laughs> You've Fantastic. almost like answered one of our questions. Yeah, we might get back to this. Yeah, yeah. Or already did. But uh, we need to format it. Then we, we'll ask it yeah. later <laughs> on. But, but hold on. Sure. Um, okay, so it's... Um, what was it? Water? Water. Um, As, uh, the last one was Jewish. I'm and... sorry, I have like intense memory problems. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine, sure. It's fine, it's fine, I, it's I said it's on record. So wa water, love, and water, Jewish, love and Jewish. Was, was exactly. the last three exactly. things. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. We'll get back to that. Uh, but uh, just ADHD while we're... is great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, uh, also, uh, earworms. If you, because um, you were saying about. Uh, some, Substituting the bad earworm with the good earworm, mm -hmm. much like cinnamon and nutmeg, does it then become too much and becomes poisonous and then unwelcome? Mm -hmm. Like, have you spoiled the song if you put it on uh, on mm -hmm. your cell phone as a ringtone, for instance? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I guess maybe an earworm that uh, that grows too large could be an ear snake. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and. 
Yeah, uh, or an ear Medusa, you know, an ear Hydra, you know, wh whatever it could be getting out of control. I guess I, it's funny, my, my girlfriend, like when she likes a song, she does play it over and over on repeat and like just really gets into it. And sometimes there are some songs that like when we were on our, uh, our first like big road trip since, you know, the lockdown began uh, in July this year, we drove uh, from New York to uh, Missouri and Minnesota and then back uh, over the course of several weeks and we listened to a lot of music we sang along with a lot of music and we discovered like one of our favorite songs is uh, the Doobie Brothers uh, Blackwater oh I don't know that and one but I don't that's do know the Doobie Brothers of course oh yeah listen to you might you might just not know the name it's the it's the one that sort of ends with like an acapella uh uh, like funk, this funky Dixieland, pretty mama, come and take me by the hand, by the hand, mm. by the hand, pretty mama. Okay. Nope. Okay. Well, that uh, it's a it's a beautiful like it's a beautiful song. I love every part of it. You know, some songs like the chorus is amazing, and like when the when the verse starts, you're just like, ooh, can't wait for the chorus to get here. But some songs like ha like this song has just so many parts, like the verses, the choruses. Like I don't even know how to how to parse it, but. That's a song that I could listen to and have listened to on repeat just because it taps into something uh, maybe primal, something just super resonant about like, wow, like they really they really figured out something. They really came up with. Something. So I feel like listening to uh, the right song over and over for a certain amount of time, maybe every song has its mm -hmm. limit. Like I remember so not poisonous. reading something. A, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, or just um, every everything has a much. Uh, it's a different limit. It's a mm -hmm. spectrum of like one song might be like arsenic, uh, is poisonous to humans in a very small mm -hmm. dose. Water is poisonous to humans in a very large dose. So some songs might be the equivalent of arsenic, and some songs might be the equivalent of water. And so yeah, I think I personally like to you know not listen to the same thing over and over again, but I have, you know, my my classics that I go back to. And I mean, fortunately, there's so many, I mean, so many beautiful musical artists. I actually just stumbled on a new person yesterday or the day before I was, so I have a friend, Dan Hershon, who is, uh, we, we did, we started out in comedy together. He doesn't do stand up anymore, but he still makes uh, funny videos and sketch comedy and animations. And he had made uh, a brief, a meditation, a video on YouTube. That's a meditation for dogs that are afraid of the thunder that's happening. Aww. So he's just like peacefully talking dogs through, uh, you know, dealing with thunder. And so that was, that was wonderful. And then after, you know, sometimes a YouTube video ends and it just auto plays something uh, from the algorithm. And so I didn't request it, but it played uh, a, a video of uh, a tiny desk concert by a woman whose name is, I believe, Yasmin Williams, who I'd never oh, heard of. Yasmin Williams and it is was amazing. Just yeah, yeah. Be just so I'd never heard of her and I just like was transfixed I mean she's like it's all it was all instrumental guitar music just sort of like hammer-ons and just like but beautiful like I I play the guitar mm -hmm. and Me when too. people play the guitar in ways that I'm like I don't know how they're doing that like it's so like I'm like wow like I would have to like spend everything and she she's been playing the guitar for 12 years which is less time than i've been playing the guitar but she's been playing it probably more per day <laughs> than i mean or or she's a natural whatever it is i just like i i went i put her put her on spotify like when i was going to sleep last night and i was just like i'm just gonna list keep listening to as much of this as possible and yeah so i feel like the fact that there are so many like so many musicians that up until yesterday or the day before i'd never heard of this woman and now there's like a whole like a, a whole you know oeuvre mm -hmm. you know a whole set of works that i can like go through and like if i seek it like i'm like wow like there's people that i loved you know 10 years ago that i'm like oh they've put out seven albums since i last heard of them so i feel like uh, I'm optimistic about the fact that uh, even if even if one song does become a poisonous snake worm, uh, ear snake, uh, <laughs> that there there'll be uh, that it will be like a, a positive, an angelic uh -huh. hydra. If one one head is removed, then numerous others will rise up to sing beautiful <laughs> siren songs that lure me to my death in its place. I have a, I a, 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 a good a, a yeah. good uh, a good water one. Uh, that like mm. um, I 
I was on tour with this uh, with this British band, and they in the van they only had one cassette, and we didn't know what it was. Like <laughs> no one knew what it was, but someone gave us a cassette, and we played it on or a CD, and we played it on. It only had one song, for like five days <laughs> we listened to one song, and it was before before it like exploded. It was "Call Me Maybe" by Carly Rae Jepsen. Mm. My yeah, goodness! Yeah, and we were like just four people just singing loudly in the car like call me maybe i know it by heart like it's in my skin also very very it. non-annoying mm. that song very non-annoying yeah yeah, yeah. oddly enough for a pop uh yeah, pop yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. just like uh, it be- became like a, a a trip like uh we listened to it we were like oh like such a pop song like okay we listened to it again and again <laughs> And then we started really getting into it, and then we got tired of it, and then we loved it even more, and then loved it even more and more. Uh, and now I just can't get enough of it. It's just like movies with one image mm. and no sound, like like a yeah, painting, yeah. Yeah. like a painting, painting. Exactly, uh, yeah. exactly, exactly. Call me definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But um, and uh, favorites, the uh, the idea of uh, of uh, having favorites for everything. I've always, or not always, always is a big, uh, maybe always, depending on uh, your take, uh, depending on your take, uh, or according to your take, um, always and never at the same time. Uh, but <laughs> uh, at some point, aha, I realized uh, that I didn't need to have favorites for things. Like a long yeah, time ago, it was like, yeah, yeah. why are why, you people battling which is the favorite of? Uh, yeah, why, why do, do I, I need, need a list? list? Lists are fine as long as there's no order necessarily, and you you can have them, but you don't need them, and yeah. uh, it's fine. Like uh, it's fine, like having like 20 favorite bands or something. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> there's no no problem. No, this is like, have, why like, do I have to choose? Like like... Who's making me choose? Oh yeah, yeah. like yeah, who's like... making you choose? Just whatever, <laughs> like this favorite, and there can be. All, I'm re- very much against something that I think is, I think is really capitalistic, actually, which is, um, the concept of or not concept. Well, the concept of, but in practice, it happens a lot, which is the best. I find Ooh. it really tiring and actually kind of uh, a hindrance to the way we yeah, should be as yeah, a yeah. society. Like no uh, but, sure. uh, who only listen to Metallica. But was, but like, no, I mean, no, I mean, but just the best, like the best, the best anything, like be best. videos on YouTube is just like the best, the best this, the best that, and this is the best. I only want the best. Why would you only want the best? There's plenty of uh, <laughs> amazing yeah, things that diverse, are not the best. Diversity is amazing. And are amazing being oh, yeah. not the best. It's fine not being the best. It's mm-hmm. okay. Just variety. Also, e- eclecticity. I, w- I would add. Ecle- This perspective, if yes, I may, you uh, absolutely may. A way that I like that. Thank you. I, I like. I I resonate with the the sentiment of what you're saying, you. and I offer this that, uh, like in comedy, which is you know my my landscape of work and creativity. Like there are so many comedians who, if somebody says this person's the best or that person's the best, I'm like, I'm not going to argue like, because they are, what they mean is like, I love them. They are wonderful. And they are the best at being themselves. Like Maria Bamford is the best Maria Bamford. <laughs> there is no one better at being Maria Bamford. And, and I would even say, and this is the thing that I offer. And is she the best? Like, of course people, she is. If, of course. Yeah. I mean, and I would say truthfully, There is no one better than Maria Bamford at comedy, which I think everyone who is the best at being themselves at comedy, like there's also no one better than Paul F. Tompkins. There is no one better than Aparna Nanchurla. There is no one better than Tig. There is no one better than Sarah Silverman. There's no one better than uh, Rory Scovel or Nick Vatterat or jo- Joe Firestone. Like there's no one better than Kate Berlant or Reggie Watts or Tim Minchin or Bo Burnham. Like the, I, the framing of it as there's no one better, I mean, it still does per- perhaps like offer like there might be somebody who's like oh what about is this person better but it's not a question of uh it's of setting up like uh you know brackets for a competition it's the fact that like there is no comparing like one like the idea of like 
the spirit of saying you can't compare apples and oranges when of course you can they're both fruits they're both round they're very similar in many ways in almost all ways like most things in the world are different than oranges. apples and yeah, oranges exactly. they compare <laughs> yes but the same way like you and you could you can compare things if you want to but like I it just it seems valuable in my life and it seems in yours as well like to spend our time and energy and efforts and uh, uh, focus our attentions on celebrating who and what we do love in the ways that we do for who they are and what they do uniquely uh but yeah i mean so when i can also understand why people are like oh this person's the best like and this thing is the best it's not necessary that they're they're trying to talk you out of like so so only listen to this only engage with this like you're a fool if you think if you think you should spend your time doing because there are so many different bests in all directions you know like from the central point where you are like if you head off you know to the left or to the up or to the west or to the in like there's all these different aspects of you know like is I talk about this sometimes when I was on America's Got Talent. Uh, you know, it's weird because your jokes are competing against many things that are not <laughs> jokes for like acrobats yeah. and dogs and orchestras yeah. and, you know, people from and like, apples the, and oranges, the circus and, and pineapples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, am I funnier than this apple? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I think I'm funnier than an apple, but maybe not funnier than a pineapple. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty and, funny, the pineapple. Yeah, yeah. And I have to agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The pineapple is maybe the funniest fruit. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the thing. like, I think there's no fruit funnier than the pineapple, but there's a lot of fruits that might be just as funny as the pineapple in their own way. Grapes, mm -hmm. grapefruit, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think uh, ideal, like that show is a competition, but ultimately none of like the... Capitalism is set up as a competition in a way like that. This this is the mindset that we're, we've all potentially, at least I know in my country, and it seems like you also have been uh, oh, touched by hasn't? the capitalism, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and so we're this is you know the the water that we've been swimming in, like you know the the soup that is our home. That like ultimately, I remember there's a comedian Ted Alexandro who's the best, love him, none better. <laughs> Ted Alexandro, like I remember when I was first going out for Last Comic Standing years ago, uh, like I think, I, I forget if it was before I got on or after, but I remember talking to him about how he had never auditioned for it and uh, and I, I really respected why be, he's like, because I don't, I don't see comedy as a competition, so I don't want to participate necessarily. And I'm paraphrasing like in yeah, a, yeah. in a comedy competition. And I also don't see comedy as a competition. I don't see any art as a competition, any entertainment. I, I think it's, if anything, you know, I'm competing with myself to be better than I was before. And ultimately I'm glad that, that, that all these shows exist that let a lot of comedians have an opportunity opportunity that let a lot of artists have an opportunity to ha be in front of a wider audience if it has if it happens to be in the guise of a competition uh then so be it that is what's happening that you know the shape of the structure of our society and you know the way things are going but i uh, ultimately you know like the the goal i i hope i hope the goal for all and i think the goal for all is ultimately you know like uh inner peace and you know joy and the elimination or decreasing of suffering for oneself and then uh and uh, one's family one's loved ones one's you know move the the circle of care out and out until hopefully you know all all sentient beings like while we're wishing why not wish for all sentient beings to be uh free of suffering and only experiencing happiness and the roots of happiness and uh and so yeah that's that I forget what the question is, but uh, I think that inner peace is the best. No, but the question was uh, exactly that. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm. Some things are the best, and uh, some things can be the best. For instance, pineapple being the best fruit in comedy, I have no qualms with. Oh yeah, and, and uh, I have um, an amazing pineapple. I could go get it, but it would it would be uh, to take a little while. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a. I believe pink you. Pink uh, rubber pineapple with the red uh, with the red oh. um, leaves, and then inside there's um, um, a crystal with like many mm -hmm. uh, many sides with like a castle inside. So that is <laughs> a particularly 
funny, funny, funny pineapple, funny pineapple. In, the, <laughs> in the realm of uh, pineapples being funny, oh, yeah. which is a lot, a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> And plus, plus, I mean, you had me at pineapple. My point yeah, was just but, like uh, variety is the spice of life, even though it's not uh, poisonous. <laughs> Maybe it is. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah. The, if the even the spice of life would be poisonous in enough yes. volume, like cinnamon and nutmeg. If you live life too much, it kills you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's right. If you have too much variety, then you get poisoned. I, I, I was, I was fine there. Why, 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 why do I keep going? This is the improv. This is the, this is the improv classes working. I guess. No, it's this is me working. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just you. me working. Okay, so which ties in with something that I wanted to address? Okay, so some people on this show. Uh, not some people on this show, some comment, commenters, uh, commentators, commenters, commenters, some people who have commented on YouTube uh, in past, past, past editions. For instance, like I was uh, on, uh, on, uh, I'm addressing YouTube comments now. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, we're uh, just but, like making just, something clear. It's just some, making something clear for no one but ourselves because <laughs> those people are probably aren't going to watch this. But um, just like one person or two once said like, oh, that dude is on cocaine. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's just how I am. You get out of the house more and meet people who talk speak, a talk uh, yeah. a lot and uh, talk... Um, Talk um, plenty uh, flee. Plenty but, flee. But yeah, but there's the that thing that people say that as you grow older, like you find out that everyone does cocaine. Yeah. I don't. I mean, but that's the point. Mm. Like, okay, so, which comes to, but like, I've tried cocaine <laughs> once and it makes me less drunk and speak more, which is... N- N- not something I want from <laughs> having fun. So or it like makes me more me, and I've, I and I I like me a lot, but I don't want more of me. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> so you want the right amount yeah, of you. I mean, I guess co- 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 like cocaine is like ah. Like I already speak like this now. I don't need cocaine. I don't want cocaine. I'm not doing it again. So uh, I tried it just for the sake of it, just for the hell of it. Um, but um, and uh, I've only had like I've um, so, so this is all regarding drug experiences. Uh, I don't have many. I have very little. But um, one of them was, for instance, uh, doing uh, like um, some uh, not, like weed, but like crystals on grinder. Like those crystals that, uh, oh, yeah, the, the, and basically just uh, yeah, the, 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 the oil, the those, oil and crystals. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly that yeah, thing. Yeah. And just had some friends in, uh, in Barcelona and basically just felt my body going very not very relaxed, but also going <laughs> like. But doing expanding. A, expanding, doing like a plank and just falling asleep for 20 hours, something. Oh, wow. uh, this is very wow. exciting, probably regarding to, uh, compared to <laughs> your experience and to your experience. I have a few. But um, <laughs> basically, is, my question is, because uh, this show is still in the interview format, even though the format isn't competition, like in capitalism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and um, this made no sense, but it's just a kind of a weird callback and um mike should i try mushrooms should you try solve oh. it though? <laughs> uh thanks for asking i i think i mean i there was a time in my life when i was more of a like a, a mushroom missionary or a mushinary if you will you needn't but uh like when i i'm i'm 43 now and i think i did mushrooms for the first time when i was maybe 25 and i hadn't had a lot of uh, oh happy belated birthday i think i only yeah, yeah i forgot Thank you so i much. was totally we That's... were extremely busy cuz um uh we have been very busy lately and i was meant to email you but i forgot because i have been oh, extremely well, busy very but nice i remember of you. That. yes there you go I appreciate it, and a happy belated birthday or early birthday to both of you. <laughs> Thank you. It um, continues on forever, so, sometimes ever. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, which is, I mean, it's an appropriate uh, topic to arise with respect to mushrooms. Uh, here's a joke I wrote about mushrooms once. is uh, Sometimes for alcohol, people like drink alcohol, and they're like, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. And with mushrooms, I feel like it's every time always. <laughs> so... 
uh yeah i would <laughs> I, my I first this experience so, funny, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank Just, you yeah. with with mushrooms uh I, my first experience it was i was at a music festival that i was performing at uh with my partner at the time and we i we had talked we i'd only just started uh having like i smoked pot for the first time and didn't really like it much uh like pretty close to that time and but mushrooms i'd heard about i'd sort of read about uh you know their potentially therapeutic qualities their you know recreational like laughter inducing qualities their philosophical insight inducing qualities and so uh, somebody had them and uh, we got them and it was just it helped me in a way understand, like I didn't have a lot of a real rich spiritual life before that. Uh, like I had, you know, been raised uh, culturally Jewish. I was somewhat somewhere, you know, agnostic, atheist ish leaning. And I'd I'd read this book by Raymond Smullyan called This Book Needs No Title. And there was a part in it that was called Planet Without Laughter, I believe. And it was about a world in which most people had forgotten how to laugh or why laughter happened and there were these like laugh masters which were sort of analogous to zen masters or you know buddhas that knew knew the secret knew how laughter worked and so imagine like if imagine somebody who didn't understand why laughter happened uh and how would you describe it to them if they're because they're all like oh is it like this like ha 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 like you know if you know if somebody's fake laughing or just going through the motions of laughing somebody who knows what true laughter is can tell uh and the way to get someone to understand what true laughter is is not to describe it acoustically or physiologically uh or physically at all it's to like so some of in the story some of these laugh masters would just like do backflips or say absurd things and then sometimes people in the audience at their talks would be like oh i understand laughter now and like some people would be like oh yeah me too ha 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 and so or the, you're german in that story what well, yeah so yeah so i, I started <laughs> reading sorry. that i read that Excuse story me, german people oh, no. a lot a lot of people a lot of german people laugh like ha 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 ha, ha. it's uh, and maybe I've, that's I've been, maybe that's a legitimate uh, just just from my experience, true laugh i German people yeah. a lot of them not all of them obviously laugh like this yes uh well, please, th please thank you uh so i i first read this book and that story before i had ever done mushrooms and so i I remember the analogy, I understood the analogy was like, I understand what laughter is, but uh, ima I can imagine people who didn't. And now I understand that I'm a person who doesn't understand the equivalent, whatever the thing that's analogous to laughter in our world, like some sort of mystical truth, some sort of spiritual reality that I was like, I don't have a reference point for this. So I was like, it's, it was like a beautiful story. I like, I understood the story intellectually, but it was only till the first time I did mushrooms that I was like, oh, there's something ineffable about this experience, something indescribable about what I'm, what I'm feeling, what I'm like, how, how, my, what I'm experiencing that I was like, oh, this is what that story was pointing mm -hmm. at. And I'm not saying that, uh, like, I'm certainly not a divinely enlightened Buddhist master, but I'm certainly, I know I, I had an experience that made me one one unit of experience uh more one one unit wiser uh, or less ignorant than i had been before uh when i hadn't had that experience and so i think that like for some people uh like if people are afraid to do mushrooms if people don't want to do mushrooms like uh I, at first i was like everyone should do this everyone's got to do this and like everyone is different and gets to make their own decisions and uh and some people might have different brain chemistries and physiology that don't mesh well with certain mind-altering substances or psychedelics or what have you. So I would say before doing a, before d doing any new substance, I would say to do as much research as you can uh, and to talk to people who have done it if you can and see you know if you 
like when I do ayahuasca ceremonies, they're very specific, like forms that get filled out that if you are on certain medications, they recommend don't do it because it will either not have an effect or have an adverse reaction because certain chemicals uh, interact in certain ways. And so I do know that like for the most part, the studies about psilocybin mushrooms have been uh, very positive as far as like being even treatments for depression or PTSD, like, you know, and, and those would be like potentially in like laboratory settings with, you know, controlled doses and perhaps like talk therapy uh -huh. in association with it as well. But this is all to say, like, I'm not saying that everyone should do mushrooms, but if you're the kind of person and you are now the specific person asking the question, should I, it seems like if you are curious about it, if you are intrigued, if you are interested, I would say, uh, it, you you get to be the ultimate arbiter of whether mm. you do it, but if you're the kind of person that's asking and interested, then do some research and then do some mushrooms, unless you don't want to. <laughs> what what if my brain is uh, likes to let's just say okay, so there's the scenario of going well and there's the scenario of not going well, and my brain, like a Schrodinger's brain, is going to like oh, if there's two possibilities, then both are already happening. So uh, I'm going to, it's also <laughs> not going to go well. That's what I mean. Yeah, is that, is that have, a thing? If you have it in your head that it's going to go wrong, then it yeah. might go wrong. That happens a lot, like with acid, yeah. I think, more than with mushrooms. Like if you're I would, I would so, on, yeah. on acid and, I'd like you, to try again. and you're yeah. afraid so. that it is that it's going to go wrong, then it, I'm not afraid, but my brain will, will a bad uh, trip, maybe. I'm not afraid, but or my brain will acknowledge that it's a thing that might happen, and because it might, then it's curious and it wants to go there, just to know. Uh, yeah, I, I would say hmm. uh, number one, you could start your first time on a, like a very small dose, just to get a sense of how it will oh, feel okay. in your body, in your mind. Uh, one thing I would recommend also is if you could do it with someone who has done it before, mm -hmm. has experience, or at least could be there like as a, you know, a, a helpful guide and that can talk you through whatever you're experiencing if you, if you start to head in a quote unquote bad mm -hmm. trip kind of direction. Uh, also the fact that like, you know, if you have a bad trip and then you could, it will end. It is almost, almost all guaranteed <laughs> that every experience that you have, like when, when I do ayahuasca ceremonies, the guide will sometimes say at the beginning, the effects come and the effects go that like, and that's the truth of every emotional experience that we've ever had. Every thought we've ever had, like, except for the one that we're having right mm -hmm. now like every like how did you feel exactly one year ago you don't know because the experience of uh whatever emotional state you were in exactly one year ago is no longer the emotional state you're having now it probably wasn't the next day and so while there is like this time dilation that can occur with psychedelics and it might feel like i i've definitely had the experience on mushrooms where i'm like Oh, is this forever? Like, I think I did mushrooms one one Halloween, one Spooktober, and I I remember like looking around and being like, "Why are there cobwebs everywhere? How long has this been?" <laughs> and uh, they were just decorations. But and eventually, I'm no longer in that situation. I'm in my home and I don't see any cobwebs, uh, even though it, it's a different Spooktober. We've come around mm -hmm. again, and uh, but yeah, that know, know this going in that. Uh, the effects will come and the effects will go. And that like the same way that right now, like at, on a day where you don't do mushrooms, a, a day could, you could have a good day or you could have a bad day or your day could be, you know, full of like every moment, you know, every moment has the possibility of like being better than the last or different than the last. And so I would say there's no more, there's no greater reason to worry that uh, a mushroom trip will be bad because it could be bad, then it is to worry, will tomorrow be a day where I'm sad because it could be a day that I'm mm -hmm. sad? Like, of course, it could be a day where you have more sadness than usual, but because you're you're mostly, I bet, not worrying about like, you know, today you're not like, oh, 17 days from now, I, want, I hope that that day isn't the saddest day possible. Like, so I would say, if you can, if you can like logically 
uh, understand that it's basically the same thing for when you start doing mushrooms. It could be one way. It could be another way. Just like every day, every moment could be one way or it could be another way. And to perhaps have some like sort of going back to the when you asked me how I am or how doing I have been. Uh, and I, I answered in part by talking about drinking water, meditating and writing, getting the, you know, sort of setting setting intentions for the day like doing some gratitude journaling thinking about the things that i'm i'm grateful for in my life that really help me like start the day on on the foot that i want to on the on the ideal brain heart foot where because i might wake up like with swirling anxieties about like all the things i have to do today or the things i didn't finish yesterday or like what whatever it might be or the the news or the, you know the happenings in the world and so i mostly do all all those things the I learned about the you've heard of the formative years of your life I learned from uh, a guy named Alan Cohen wrote a book in which he talked about the formative minutes of one's life or, or the formative minutes of each day that like if you start each day like intentionally like thinking about like not just immediately jumping into the stormscape of social media or online news or or your whatever your to do's are if you can spend 10 minutes whatever it is meditating exercising yoga praying like just doing something intentionally that can be like be in the same way that the formative years of your life help determine like what what your life is going to be like if you are hopefully given enough food and care and shelter and clothing and love and attention in those times then that will set you up for a greater success uh, than if you don't have any food in your first couple of years of life uh, and so similarly you can feed yourself uh, the the formative minutes of the beginning of your day by being like, how do I want to begin this day? Uh, if I can, with gratitude, if I can, with kindness to myself, with self-compassion, with, you know, doing something that, you know, feels good and present, uh, like meditation for me, uh, and just really like giving yourself that time. And so I say all this to say that could also be something that you do at the beginning of a mushroom mm -hmm. experience if you decide to start, because it's not, after you eat them, it's not gonna kick in immediately for the most part. And so you could spend time, you know, listening to music that makes you feel the way you wanna feel, uh, you know, engaging with uh, the other person that's there, if there's another person there, uh, and like, you know, talking about things that you care about, things that you love, people and experiences and things that you find the best and just sort of give yourself they talk about the you know set and setting you know the mi mindset and the environmental setting that you find yourself in either you know geographically or emotionally I guess emotional is the mindset uh, and so Ideally, you want to do it on a day where you feel like like this could be a good day. This could be a good experience. And then, you know, build the structures around the the experience that's about to happen to give it the best chance for success. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested in the uh, this is kind of like kind of like uh, mushroom therapy. <laughs> it felt almost. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but like I'm interested in the mushroom aspect, but I'm even more interested in the whole and in, in the rest of what you said the 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 life uh tips that those are the formative minutes is fantastic oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no no you were going to oh yeah to, to, you you raised your hand earlier like me you were pointing oh, yeah. at yourself no, i i because... i take i take a, a lot of medicine for mm. mental health oh and yeah. so there is definitely um some uh substances that i can take like Anything that is a downer, I cannot take. Um, uh, psychedelics are like right there in the middle of like a little bit dangerous mm -hmm. for like the next few days. Uppers is fine because I have ADHD. So like uppers is just makes me more like calm. So <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. Sure. But I have um, a story about um, being high for 48 hours on MDMA. Mm -hmm. Oh, because that's a long it, time. It, I thought it would never end. Like I cried at one point, like thinking this is never going to end and I'm going to be stuck like this forever. And it just wouldn't go away. Um, I just basically took too much, uh, just crystals on the on the on the bottom of a of a glass. Like and I drank it. Sure. And, and then 
um, tying in to your story about like going to the bathroom when you should go to the bathroom. Um, mm-hmm. Which we did, all of us, I think. I was yes. starting to dance and it was starting to kick in. I may have to go again yes, soon, yes, yes. but yes. We, uh, well, we'll take too much, too much of your time yeah. uh, more. It's been, it's been fairly long. I'm sorry, not to um, cut you off. No, like, um, so like it started to kick in and I, I started to need to pee. And I was like, this is gonna kick in so hard. Like I can feel it like going to kick in so hard. I'm going to the bathroom now before I'm too high to do it. And so I went to the bathroom and I woke up five hours later having vomited <laughs> and having passed out uh, in, the, in the bathroom. And like when I left, it was 8 a.m uh drenched in sweat and uh wow. my friends were all looking for me being like where are they like oh my god like where where did they go um and then i just like had to endure the rest of the basically like overdose kind of um i had sure. to like endure yeah, all like- of it it was funny at one point because like i just hung out like ev- with everyone at the after party And I was like, just like high, Mm. Um, but I was too high. And it was just a, it wasn't like a bad trip or anything. It was just like too much of a good thing. It became a serpent. Oh yeah. It it became, Mm -hmm. it became extra spice. Yeah. But I'm glad that I went to the bathroom when I did like, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. If, If you're gonna vomit, the bathroom's a nice place to do yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I I really avoid vomiting. It's just one of those experiences that I get really sick. Like I mean, not I mean oh, obviously sure. I, I mean, I vomited, but just oh, like no, I, I get I really like physically. <laughs> I I I I feel like death. Like mm. uh, for a long time until I vomit. And then that's why I just like, I got cold sweats, fever, oh, no. uh, like that. I'm just oh. like, I'm mildly indisposed and I'm like, the. <laughs> and then I do it <laughs> and then I'm fine. And then I can do all, everything all over again. But <laughs> I really avoid that state, particular state of being is just wretched. <laughs> it just really, really sucks. <laughs> Literally to, to wretch is uh, a verb that I think means to vomit. Wretched. So yeah. wretched is very appropriate. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know that actually, because, well, not my first language, but uh, wretched, yeah, wretched vomited. Okay, wow, fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know that. Now it absolutely there's a, applies. There's one, one of the best mm-hmm. uh, Italian bands is called Wretched. Oh. So good. Everyone ah. go listen to it. Wow. Yeah, I have a patch of them okay. on my vest. What is this genre? Oh, it's just an arco punk. An arco punk. Yeah. 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 By the way, uh, Mike. Uh, well, we can we will do a second. We're taking. I don't know how how are you in terms of time, but we've been on for an hour and so. Uh, but we oh, yeah. can do like we can do something. We can have you on another time and ask. I'd be happy to Thank return. Thank you so much. Okay. That'd be lovely. It's been very fun. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, it's fun and the <laughs> headphones are alive. Too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so much fun that the headphones are coming alive. Yeah. But um, the... Uh, the earworm the, has the pushed earworms. the earbud. <laughs> yeah. That earworms always reminds me, you know what, of Star Trek 2. When they have like the, the one of them... I haven't watched this in like 25 years or 30 years or something. 30 years. Okay. Yeah, about 30 years. And because they, there's, they put like this worm literally inside of an ear well Mm -hmm. it's not a literal worm because Mm -hmm. it's uh it looks like a date you know the fruit a creature not the the, which which is kind of of like a slug kind of kind of a funny fruit but not as funny as pineapple (laughs) but like the date uh will go is this date a nut what was it it's a fruit and it's a fruit fruit. yeah yeah and then uh it so they put it inside of one of the crew's ears and then they take over him mentally. Oh, yeah, or something. I remember that. Episode, it's yeah. really, really creepy. I don't know why for, I remember this. But for, just... for me, when I think of Eworm, I always, like, uh, not always because, like, the show hasn't been on for that long, but that little worm in Adventure Time. Oh, or for sure. the, um, uh, the little worm that shows up in the tiny, almost every uh, episode. Tiny and, uh, pink worm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have, like, a, a tiny snail that is, like, a 
it shows up in every episode, like in a corner or something, just waving. Mm-hmm. And for me, like when I imagine like earworms, I'm just imagining like a small, like little thing going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Adorable. Well, Mike, we'll speak about your music next time because we're also musicians and we're, I'm very curious. Mm-hmm. I've seen uh, some sets of Love yours it. in which you address that, but uh, there's one on YouTube for like a 15, 15 minutes or something. I forget, like a couple of years ago. Um, but um, I'd like to talk to you about music later so we'll do that next, next time, time. For, yeah. Sure, yeah. for sure that'll be great okay so um made of things uh is oh oops we'll also do portuguese expressions next time maybe or do you like no we can do this now okay so uh one thing we've been doing uh, is um because recent guests have been comedians uh and it makes sense is that uh in portugal we have um uh, local regionalisms and regional expressions that obviously when translated even when not translated don't make <laughs> a lot of sense <laughs> so yeah. sure um we've uh, just been presenting our yeah. guests with creating a segment like a yeah, segment of uh, two or three and yeah, see what do you think of them portuguese <laughs> expressions that translate okay. poorly, poorly into, into english. english it's pewdiepie Please. believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> Portuguese expressions which translate poorly into English. Pewed pie. Oh, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that translates very that well translates into English. Very well into English. <laughs> the acronym, um, such as AKA, uh, uh, which is the the, um, the album uh, that you should get by Mike Kaplan, and we're doing this oh, an hour you. twenty into the show. <laughs> we should have done this mm-hmm. way before. No, it'll be it'll be in the text. No, it's, what it's about fine. plus it's, it was number one on iTunes, I think. What right? about A K A B? Like number one instead of A C A B. When it came out, it was yes. A C A B. Oh yeah. A K A B. All all knitters are bastards. It's it's just the temptation to play with A K A is immense, as you might have found in your promotion of the oh, sure. album <laughs> well i i appreciate your your helping spread the word about well, it. <laughs> well aka i've i've you know what i was curious about is like uh, if uh aka was a word in any language and it is in several languages but one that i found was oka in swedish which means uh, to go mm. uh okay you know to go to go or to travel or something like that but I just found it found it amusing. It's not necessarily something. Um, and it has been the thing that you've been doing. So, so it yeah, in. yeah, it's lately, true. back in tour, back on tour. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Okay, so Portuguese expressions. Uh, okay, so grain by grain. No, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this in Portuguese before, uh, first, um, which is grão a grão enche a galinha o pap, which means which translates to. Grain by grain, the chicken fills its belly. Hmm. Which I mean, means basically, I could if see that. you do something uh, and take your time doing it, eventually you'll get the uh, for uh, the one step yeah, at a time. Yeah, one step at a time, at a time. Yeah. and one, you will one grain at a time. If you're a chicken, take it one grain at a time. And maybe one stone once in a while. Maybe a stone once in a while. Maybe yeah. a bug, I guess. Yeah. Chickens might eat bugs. Yeah, I mean, cows eat uh, birds sometimes. Yeah, they do for calcium. I didn't oh, know. Yeah, they do. Wow. They do. Mostly grass. Mostly grass. Mostly grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's. I like it. I think that, that expression tracks for me. Grain by grain. The chicken fills its belly. And by grain, we imagine, well, it's generic grain, but it can be also... Grain of corn, yeah. no, perhaps? It's, it's grain, all, grain of corn, but also I would... When I think of grain, I think of... Uh, chickpeas? Chickpeas. Yeah. Because, because in, chick- oh, okay. in Portuguese, in Portuguese grão, grão is... is grão de bico, which is chickpea, but we also mm-hmm. just call it grain. So, so, mm-hmm. so oh, chickpea by chickpea, okay. a chick... <laughs> Peas eventually. A chicken. Yeah. <laughs> it I like goes it. to the bathroom when it has to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. When it's too full, please yeah. Do, please do chicken. That'll be good advice for us all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do like the chicken and take life grain by grain and eventually pee yeah. when you have to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Very nice. Uh, yeah. The other one is a ver vamos. 
this is very popular. I don't find I don't find it very amusing, but it's just like yeah. um, uh, ver vamos. Uh, it would translate to to see we are going. To see, to see we are we going. are going, or to see let's go. It's like it's like to see like to the ocean. To no, no to, to see or observe. to see like to visualize. To see okay. what happens, we will. Why it's oh. Like Yoda talk. Uh, it's I like no. It's very, ah. uh, very like hesitant about what is actually going to happen. It's just we'll see. Is it it's like not... K Sarah Sarah? Well, like whatever will be will it's be. More, less, it's it's less... a little bit more negative. Like ah, uh, let's yeah. see, okay. let's see if that that really happens. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's oh, not, okay. Yeah, Sarah Sarah is like oh well, that's life. You know, uh, uh, but this is like, uh, is it life? <laughs> we'll see. It's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> it is and has been forever. <laughs> uh, but um, mm -hmm. or the other one. Oh, uh, there's a, uh, actually a Japanese expression which I really like, which is shoganai, which means it cannot be helped. Yeah. This is not Portuguese. Like this is welcome be, to Japanese like, expressions. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I think it's it's a little bit like. It cannot be avoided. Avoided, or, yeah. Or helped. It cannot be helped. It is the state of life. Yeah. So therefore, be at peace. Something like that. Yeah, it, yeah, like that's a good like one. life is sure. terrible, but yeah, life yeah, is wonderful. So you know. Yeah, uh -huh. it's just I, I yeah. find it really. I, I accept. I, I like. Mm -hmm. I I like. I like. I I like. I like. I like. I don't know. I've never. Suddenly you're Italian. <laughs> I like. You became Borat kind yeah, of as exactly. well. I like. You know, you know yeah. what? This is seems like a show like that's <laughs> trash talking other or just the not trash talking but like saying humiliating things about other nationalities. But because of the Germany thing. But I used to live in Italy. Uh, no, no, as well. Yeah. Uh, in We're, different times. Yeah. Um, but I used to live in Rome, and for like a couple of months, I had never heard anyone speak English. This was. 20 years ago, not now, because people now are perfectly, you know, speak English, I guess, mm -hmm. much more than they used to. But mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> um, the first time I heard English, it was like, Antonio, when are you going to cook the bacala? <laughs> and I was like, you're joking, right? <laughs> this is a, a rib. This is, this is like, no, they actually oh, sure. speak with the stereotypical <laughs> accent and feel, feel like, should I? Like, uh, this is kind of... I, I had uh, oh, one story where like... Um, this is real? I had you know? some... some <laughs> this uh, this wasn't an exaggeration. A, a band from Paris was uh, was sleeping over and one of them has like perfect like American English and I have like... I lived in California for a while so our accents really match like really matched well together and we talked a lot and a lot and a lot in English and one of my Italian friends says I am no no I speak English so fluently and I tell her like Federica do you realize that you speak to me in Italian all day and I am not Italian <laughs> and she's like oh yeah you speak so many languages <laughs> So she was making fun of me for being so fluent, but I'm like fluent yeah, I, in Italian with her like with, every day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. sure. <laughs> oh, look how how well you can speak the English and, you know, like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm already not speaking in, other, in my own language, <laughs> uh, which, because we speak in Portuguese. Okay, uh, nothing, nothing against accents, though, but it's just funny no, because no. you would think that a stereotype wouldn't be true, but... It is the norm, which is really weird to oh, have yeah, to my, deal with. My uh, my ex partner cause... was uh, was uh, was Italian, and he would um, like when people like would ask him like stereotypical things, he would just be like, "No, but do you think I am like that?" <laughs> and I'm like, Ugh. "You will think that a little bit, yeah, yeah, a little bit." That people yes, don't a little bit especially this, <laughs> this like very, this very, they, very, it, ah. it's very much a, very much mm -hmm. something that yeah. Italian people do yes okay so I understand and this one uh, I particularly like and I think uh, it's um, f uh, this is back to the Portuguese expressions which is uh, the third one which is 
é de pequenino que se torce o pepino é de pequenino que é de pequenino que se torce o pepino it is from very little or from a very young age that the cucumber gets twisted <laughs> oh I like that uh Yeah, that's uh, it. Sort of ties into what we were talking about about the formative minutes yeah, and yeah. the formative years of one's life. The formative years of a cucumber's life might be if it is twisted. Then yeah. it, uh, hopefully it can do some, you know, go to therapy uh, and learn about the source of its mm -hmm. twisting trauma and learn to process it and move past it and uh, you know it, maybe not become completely untwisted, mm -hmm. but learn to accept the the twists and turns that are a part of all of our cucumber mm -hmm. lives because. We, and, as and we corrupt are, the, <laughs> the corruption in the early years, yeah. Uh, and corrupt the corruption of the cucumber. Hello, government <laughs> <laughs> of cucumbers. Uh, the parliament of cucumbers. Your fate is to be twisted, I guess. <laughs> so let's start while we're... No, it's the opposite. Your fate is to be untwisted, so... No, that's actually the totally the wrong point of the expression, <laughs> which is uh, if you want to get um, your cucumber in, <laughs> in a bunch. <laughs> no, but if you want to, uh, if you want to be good at something, might as well start early on. It's from yeah, it a very early to, age that to, you become good at yeah. what you are. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. But why the twisting of cucumbers? I have no idea. I don't know. I've never seen a twisted cucumber. Never. Never. Well, it, it didn't start early enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be more sense. It would make more sense. Uh, it would make more sense with the pickles, even though we don't pickle our uh, cucumbers yeah, a lot as much I as mean, other countries. Like, yeah, pickles are cu cucumbers. Usually. Yeah, pickles. Yeah, usually. Usually, pick, usually and cauliflower. You can pickle like and most, and most of carrot. everything. Yeah, our pickles. Our pickles are usually like with meat that you eat, is like uh, cucumbers, or not. But uh, tofu, for instance. But if you do like a pika pao, will uh, meat or not? Uh, it's like cauliflower, cauliflower cucumbers, carrots. and carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's but a, that's a mm. but not like I mean, the, for instance, like we were speaking about Germany, not like Germany because they pickle all the cucumbers or something. Oh, I have a friend that is obsessed with pickling, and yeah. his pantry is just now like. Uh, we're not just so pickle centric. Just, yeah, yeah. It just pickle, he pickles pickle like. Everything that I didn't know could be pickled, mm -hmm. but right now I'm pickling some um, some uh, piri piri, some, uh, um, some uh, uh, chilies, some chilies, and I have them like sitting in the in the drawer for oh, a are few you? months. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, my sister. We live together. You know, and uh, so I didn't know about this. And this has been going on <laughs> under my yeah, nose so for a few months. It's been there. Oh, it's been there for a while now. It might Ooh. be extra spicy. Yeah. Not too spicy, yes, otherwise you'll yes, die. Yes. Oh. <laughs> but yes, you were saying you were gonna there's say. There's a there's a just a quick real maybe marginally related thing. There's a book called Crooked Cucumber oh. that uh, is an a biography, I believe, of a Zen master that I, I like a lot named Shunryu Suzuki. Uh, and I don't know why it, exactly it's called Crooked Cucumber because I haven't read it yet. But uh, maybe it's maybe, next yeah, yeah. time. Yeah, I'll yeah, report yeah. back. Yeah. Also, uh, an album that uh, Pavement never released. Crooked Cucumber, Crooked sure. Cucumber. Uh, <laughs> this is a tongue twister. <laughs> crooked Cucumber, Crooked, crooked cu cu Cucumber. Crooked Cucumber, Crooked Cucumber. The tongue cucumber. becomes twisted at a very yeah, early yeah, yeah. age. Yes. <laughs> if you exactly. <laughs> As it tries to go around the twisted cucumber. Crooked Cucumber now. It's a cucumber now. Because mm -hmm. it got twisted very early on. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So, two things that um, are typically made of things that yeah. are. I'm going to leave the others, the other th stuff that I prepared for another time because it's we're running like an hour and a half. Uh, so, three th um, three things that you're made of. You all have already said water, love, love and Jewish. Jewish. You're, so you're sticking yeah, with that. Jewishness. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to answer the question uh, from the get-go, having not said that, I, I yeah, I <laughs> which mean, works I guess a lot. I, I'm very happy well. to stick. With it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll stick. I'll stick with it. Water, <laughs> water, uh, love, and Jewishness. As, Fantastic. Yeah. There's a lot of cucumbers in there as well, but uh, if I had to name only three, yeah, sure, I accept it. <laughs> I was just, I was just, um, I was just exporting the. Uh, 
the answer that Paul uh, Paul F. Tompkins uh, said on the show because um, we these segments will put them a- after the the main episode uh, the, the the at least the three things one yeah, the others come before but um, the um, and so I just uh, uh, just re listened yeah, and rewatched yeah. Paul's answer and he did say mustache. Believe it or not, <laughs> and we're I, like, "Wow!" I okay. believe it. He did say mustache, like owning the mustache. It's a, fu- a fun yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The mustache, amongst other things, but yes, mm-hmm. love, love is something that people, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is great. Yeah. Good, go with love, and um, Thank and you. the um, okay. So many things is based on the idea. This is more a, ser- a serious question. The show is. I mean, whatever, uh, wherever it goes, I, even though it is, it is prepared. Uh, of course it is. There's plenty of questions that I've prepared. Yes. I believe it. You have uh, been through it. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is um, uh, made of things. It's based on the idea that you've dedicated yourself to uh, whatever art you're doing because uh, something uh, happened to you uh, while uh, in the per- personal experience or something twisted something, your cucumber. Something twisted your cucumber that mm-hmm. made you go, uh, oh, I want to do that forever um, or as long for as long as possible. Uh, did you have this? And if so, what was it? I mean, you've mentioned music, so. Uh, music is yeah. uh, certainly a big part of... Yeah, but did you have like a, a moment where it clicked for you? Yeah, especially in terms of uh, your main uh, bread making. <laughs> is, that, is, is that applicable sure. in English? Yeah, yeah I understand yeah. the question. Yeah. Uh, when I So I didn't love playing the violin when I was sort of made to uh, in my earliest years. But when I went to, uh, I had a friend from my summer camp, a guy named Ari, who uh, w- one time we were hanging out and he had brought his guitar with him. And I remember uh, he like went to the bathroom and I was just sort of picked up his guitar and was kind of like, you know, m- messing around with it and like f- plucking certain strings and finding. Actually, like the first thing I discovered was sort of like the first three notes of, you know, the one of the Star Trek theme songs, because if you just play, I think it's, you know, the uh, like A, A, D and G strings, that will be like da, 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 something like that, you mm-hmm. know, and you don't have to put your fingers anywhere. You're like, oh, I was like, oh, wow. And so I was now discovering like I'd been trained to like play the violin. So I know how to put my fingers on a stringed instrument, but these were just different strings. So it was kind of like, you know, I'm like, I know how to i know something of how to do this but there's some it was like a fun it was a fun thing to discover that i could teach myself how to play the guitar from having all all the you know theory and violin uh knowledge uh mm-hmm. had, that had been sort of crammed yeah. into me previously yeah. um and so that was like i mean that was the initial spark and then i got my own guitar and just started playing it all the time uh, and I wouldn't even call it practicing. It was just so much fun playing. And then I started writing songs. And I probably when I was around like 15 at summer camp, I like a kid uh, said something that inspired me to write like the first funny song that I wrote. Um, I think he he had blamed me for something that wasn't my fault, like that he was supposed to call his parents at a, at a certain time and he'd forgotten. And and he was like, I think jokingly blaming me. He's like, it's because of you that I didn't get to call my... And so I wrote a song that was just like, it was called the kangaroo song and the lyric, the chorus was basically like, because of you, there are no kangaroos. <laughs> and, uh, and then... All the verses and all the choruses would just like build on like other ridiculous things, you know, that me me accusing or, you know, the spirit of him accusing me of doing all these things. And it just became, you know, like kind of a, a very minimal, a micro like cult hit among my group of friends <laughs> at camp. And that was sort of like the first discovery that I had that I could uh, like create something, you know, musical, comedic, that other people would enjoy. And that is what, uh, you know, started me along the path of doing what fantastic, I did. Fantastic, fantastic. And what, what about the first song uh, that you ever learned to play on guitar? Mine was Tontable Pilots Plush. Uh, great question. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good it's one. A good, it's a pretty I, good song my to mom, learn as the yeah. first song, you know, because oh, yeah. it's not obvious, yeah. you know. Mine was um, yeah. Horizons by um, You Taught Me. Oh when yes, I was but by, did you by um, 
Her, uh, Horizons uh, by Steve Hackett during Genesis. I mean, that yeah. piece, that's that classical piece. Mm -hmm. I forgot how to play it anymore. Yeah. I don't know how to play it anymore. I still know how to play it. Like, I don't know the full song, mm -hmm. but like that. Oh, that I never knew the part. full song. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Still, the... I still remember it. Like, and I play it like every time I warm up at shows. I still play that. Uh -huh. It's a gorgeous, um, it's a gorgeous um, classical guitar piece mm -hmm. that they recorded in, with Genesis yeah, it's in seventy like two or something. Or two? Yeah, it's just like I'm in long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I've, I'm actually beautiful. learning. I just learned, and I know how to play that fully now. Um, a song which is in a similar vein by uh, Gentle Giant, another prog, uh, prog rock uh, band. The song is called A Reunion, and it's really beautiful as well. So all, th all recommended. And yours, uh, uh, but first your first song? first song that uh, well, did you? Uh, sure. You already knew violin, and you already knew theory. So basically, you had a world of choice, right? Or not really? Uh, I did, but I didn't have the greatest skill. Like I couldn't play bar chords. So like I, I was looking through my mother's music books uh -huh. that she had, like on her on our piano, for a song that. I like looking at like so not the tablature, but you know, like the little images of where to put your fingers that describe, you know, how to shape each mm -hmm. chord. And I was like looking for a song that I knew that had a bunch of only finger configurations that I could mm -hmm. do. And the song that I found that fit both of those bills was I Will Survive. <laughs> Speaking of earworms, of ear like. Yes. Which Service. none of us will. Which none of us will. By the way, <laughs> I mean we will, we will, we will for future. infinite moments until we don't. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My my full first full song was "Everybody Hurts" by REM. Well, oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, another yeah. earworm. Yeah, another earworm. So positive. Uh huh. Such uh -huh. a positive message. But the first, the first, like the for a positive earworm, we could call it an earworm. Earworm. Your warning. Just, uh, just like little words. Oh yeah, with, that's with like with a. Um, oh, you're, you're with blankets warm. and everything. You're warm. You're you're warm. Yeah. Yes, you're warm. it warms your ears. An ear yes, warm. Yeah, I like that. Thank you so much, Mike. This was very lovely. Oh, this was thank very you. fun. Very nice to meet you both. Uh, Hopefully, we'll, you'll and be back on the show I, at some point. We'll let's do, let's call it a year. Then we'll check out. Uh, I'm. Very happy to do it. Uh, happy to have been here, and uh, you're both very nice people. Thank you so, so much. Thank yeah. you so much for and having it's, me. And uh, it's really great to. Uh, well, it's really the main reason that this show exists is that we tend we only have on people that we like, and, and who are the best, and at, who are the best at, at being. <laughs> Who they are? Um, this could be the title of the, the best Mike Kaplan. The best Mike Kaplan. Uh, there oh, you go. Very. I love it. <laughs> I hope you fucking algorithm <laughs> likes it. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, uh, but the internet these days, kids. Oh well. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but um, thank, thank you so you. much for being yeah. on. It was thank really you. lovely. And, and plus, it's uh, really awesome that you know I've been following you since. I don't know the first Conan set. I think like 2009 or 2010 or something was like. Uh, and, it was uh, yeah. Um, and I, I, it's the one that's not on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So there's one that's not on YouTube, and that's the one I I know that I followed you since. Mm -hmm. um, mm. um, and well, um, thank you. And thank you for doing those things and those sets and mm -hmm. those all of those uh, lovely things. And. Um, yeah, and uh, where was I going? Just like, oh, it's just awesome that w um, we end up having this chance to talk and find out and have fun and uh, yeah. say stupid things and uh, made find out fun. made of fun and uh, find out that mm -hmm. we have a lot of things that uh, are alike and yeah, yeah. we could couldn't have maybe imagined or maybe we could maybe it's all in our heads maybe it's not <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> forever we and have ever. the same like positive <laughs> oh yeah uh, for sure outlook on life that uh, there's like positive yeah and energy oh, yeah. And listening to listening to the album was like yeah uh, and all of your sets really yeah, but it was yeah. like oh I thank like, you I, I am like <laughs> that someone is aggressively yeah. nice yeah yeah i think it's such a positive Aww. Same. Thing to be like everyone like it's being nice is an act of rebellion in itself yeah actively um, nice being actively be, nice being actively i like yeah, it for nice. sure. yeah. yeah yeah for sure and thank you for being actively well, nice yeah, yeah.
with us and the always. same to you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, best of luck Thank with you. everything. Bye-bye. Bye. You Bye. as well. Thank All you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.